Today, 60% of organizations are at various stages of machine learning adoption, and about 45% believe that the technology has triggered extensive data analysis and insights. As organizations start unlocking the value of data, machine learning is going to be one of the most powerful technologies in a modern enterprise. The hype cycle for terms like machine learning or artificial intelligence continue to climb and grandiose outcomes are promised for the future and under the garb of these terms. According to IDC, spending on AI and machine learning will grow from $12 billion in 2017 to $57.6 billion by 2021. And of course, a host of forces would be driving the machine learning market as it powers the algorithm or program to run eff efficiently and accurately. To understand how we can scale the AI ladder and accelerate enterprises' current machine learning adoption by laying down an effective information architecture platform, let me hand it over to Mr. Martin Chi, Vice President, Analytics Asia Pacific IBM. Um, again, my name is Martin, and I'm the Vice President for Analytics uh, for IBM Asia Pacific. And I think there's a my title here on this is slightly different from I guess the invite. My title here is slightly provocative. Uh, the title of my webinar is Don't Let Machine Learning Become a Scam. And really it alludes to the need to have a clear understanding of the realities of AI and machine learning. Now, I just want to preface this webinar uh, by saying that I'm using the term machine learning and AI interchangeably. And you will hear many terms being used in the field of data science. AI, machine learning, deep learning, these terms are not mutually exclusive and not completely you know, exhaustive. Uh, terms often overlap, and there isn't really a widely accepted definition for each of them. To me, what's important is that these terms belong to the broader field of data science, which is the set of activities that are used to extract knowledge from data. So if we can move to the next slide, um, I think as uh, mentioned, you know, there's a huge focus on, on this space. You know, according to IDC, 75% of enterprises will have digital transformation at the center of their corporate strategy. And they will all be leveraging AI in their applications by 2020. And that's according to IDC. Gartner has, a has a, also a different a view. Uh, they view that 85% CIOs will be piloting, piloting AI programs by 2020. Now, those are obviously you know, global um, details. Uh, in India, very interesting. The demand for data scientists in India is going to, has shot up by 417% just in the last past year. And AI adoption among Indian firms is expected to grow threefold over the next two to three years. So huge growth. Now, with all this focus on the AI, the question is, Will enterprises get the benefit they want and realize the dream of what AI can do for them? So we're going to dive into the details. Now, let's go on to the next slide. Now, when you hear the term machine learning, right, what are your thoughts? What do you think machine learning is? Well, it, simply, I guess it's choosing an algorithm, feeding it some data, applying labels and predictors to the data, learning a function, I guess mapping X to Y. I, this appears to be quite simple. But this is just the model development part of ML. A lot of this model development can and will be, in you know, the, the, the years to come, be automated. In the real world, machine learning is more complicated and is more than just model development. In fact, succeeding in machine learning will require not just technology, but also focus, focusing on a number of softer business and organizational requirements. Now, we will cover both the technology as well as these business requirements in this webinar. Now, this is a slide which shows, you know, I guess, uh, utopia, right? We're looking at machine learning and we're looking at AI. And companies have been really sold on this alchemy of data science. 
they have been promised transformative results. They model the expectations after their favorite digital bond companies, and there are many of them around in India, around the world. Now they've piled a ton of money into hiring expensive data scientists and machine learning engineers. And they've invested heavily in software and hardware. They've also spent a considerable amount of time coming up with ideas, ideating. Yet, despite all this effort and money, you see that many of these companies are enjoying little to no meaningful benefit. And this is primarily because the technology underpinnings, the foundations have not been put in place. They spend resources on too much experimentation. They start out on projects with no clear business purpose and activities that don't align with organizational priorities. And this will happen, right? When the music stops and the money dries up, the first things will tighten and, and resources that are funding this will, will disappear. And that's by my title. It's then that data science will be accused of being a scam. So let's, let's go into the details and uncover. Let's step back a little bit and talk about what real world machine learning is looking like. And I think, um, can we move on to the next slide? I think we're behind, next slide. So we're talking about real world machine learning here. Um, for startups, on new businesses that don't have to worry about you know, issues like data residency and legacy applications or having data that resides across multiple locations in multiple geographies, or even the need to work across departments, AI can be rather simple. There are many resources and tools and services which are available on the cloud. And IBM also provides, and together many other vendors provide these tools and services. The challenge for many enterprises is managing the growing volume, variety, velocity, and veracity of data. Enterprises which have been in the business for a while, not startups, have to think about complying with growing regulations, managing outdated, sometimes outdated monolithic systems. Now on the technology front, let's start with technology first. There are three Ds which we need to focus on to support machine learning. First, there's data prep, the first D. Next, model development. And thirdly, model deployment. The middle D, as I said, is increasingly being automated, right? But we need to focus on the other two Ds. 80% of data scientists, and I think many of you would have heard this statistic, the time of it is 80% of the data scientist's time is spent preparing data required for AI, time which could have been spent more productively elsewhere. 80% of an enterprise's challenge is in the deployment of the models, not the creation of the models, but the deployment of the models. One more challenge. Enterprise customers love the public cloud, but many are yet to be ready to fully embrace it for various reasons, regulation, legal challenges, data residency challenge, you know, they can't fully embrace it. Therefore, flexibility is really needed between the on-prem world, the private cloud world, as well as the public cloud world, right? So that's what we need to focus on. Um, you know, if we think about real world machine learning, what you need to do is you need to prepare the data and then build the model and then deploy it. This is a continuous cycle, which has myriad challenges at different stations. So in this picture, this is a diagram, you see the circle going round and round, and that's precisely how machine learning works. It is a continuous process, never ending, always improving. Now, the challenge is compounded by the fact that the legacy infrastructure that you have has to coexist with the cloud. Next slide, let's talk about the first D. The first D is around data prep. Now, when we think about data prep, it's about pulling in and preparing the data. The challenge is very few enterprises have data just conveniently sitting around. I guess that's only possible in Kaggle competitions, you know, competitions where, you know, uh, which are con controlled environments where data science students can get cleansed data which is provided and they can use to build the best algorithm. 
Well, that's, that's not real world. The real world is data is all over the place. The data would be in multiple systems, for example, in transactional systems, in marketing systems, in CRM systems. And the data comes in at real time, event data, IoT devices. And the data also exists in many forms and formats, structured, unstructured. Machine learning needs to be able to have, needs to be successful in the machine learning. You need to be able to consume all this data. This data has to be ingested and collected before you can even start to explore and cleanse it. Next slide. Let's talk a little moment on model deployment. I've already touched on it. As I indicated earlier, a large part of model deployment can be automated more and more. But you still need to trial and test the models to ensure that you're getting the best results. Now, there are traditional tools like SAS, SPSS, which have been around for many years, which have been used for developing models. But there are also many new uh, offerings and tools. There's been significant development in the space. And with these new capabilities and tools available through open source projects. And many of you are probably starting to use these as well. So it's obviously getting model development is getting easier. There are libraries out there which we can borrow from. Um, but these models which you pick and borrow from GitHub, for example, they need to be managed within your enterprise. They're not, they're unique to your business. They've been trained on your data. They need to be managed within your enterprise. And that brings me to the third D, deployment. Let's go on to the next slide. Now, every enterprise has thousands and thousands of business processes and applications. Now, you have to publish the models in a way that they can be consumed in these processes, else they will just be sitting in the library. And you have to pay special attention to how you are monitoring the effectiveness of this model. What if the model is not giving you accurate results? Example, if a bank is running a fraud detection model for credit cards and the model is throwing back zero alerts, what will they do? What will the data scientists do? What will the team do? Would you rewrite the model? Will you feed it more data to retrain the model? You've got to think about how this is done in a very structured and well-managed way. The predictions also have to be provided in a timely fashion. And actions need to be taken in real time. If not, back to this fraud example, you know, business banks will face, can face financial losses or false positives given by the models can impact customer satisfaction. So you need to know what to do once the accuracy of your models degrade. And they will degrade over time, right? They will manage as data changes and as, as the environment changes, um, models need to be constantly maintained and managed. And all these challenges will need to be thought through very carefully. Next point, let's go to the last D. Um, sorry, let's go to the next slide, right? And if you look at this, you know, right in the center, you've got that cycle of uh, managing the, this all are the 3Ds, but all around, this is what enterprises look like today. Unless, of course, your, your company is born in the cloud over the, last, over the last 10 years. Now you've got to infuse these machine learning into all of these systems. Now, this is quite complex. And as you are looking at data generated and stored in different systems, Many of them are legacy systems. How do you get to this data? Now, this is compounded by the fact that organizations also face a dispersion of skills. Not all the skills needed to do this, these tasks which I just went through, right? the, the data uh, collection, the model development and model deployment, not all these tasks reside in one person or one team. They probably exist across the organization. How do you ensure that the different individuals, the different teams are able to collaborate effectively around this ML process? Only then can you ensure that organizations can infuse machine learning into the thousands of business applications 
and business processes. We touch, machine learning will touch every part of the enterprise. Do you have the ability to manage machine learning, not as a skunk work in the basement by a group of data scientists, but how do you do it at scale across your enterprise, taking into account what you have currently in your enterprise? Let's move on to the next slide. And this is you know, our view of, of how machine learning needs to be worked on. In IBM, we believe that you cannot have AI without IA. You cannot have, I'll repeat that again, you cannot have AI without IA. And that's to say an information architecture. We describe it in terms of climbing up the AI ladder. So starting at the bottom of the ladder, you need to be able to access data of every type, regardless of where that data lives. Next, you've got to collect the data. You need to make that collection simple. You need to make data simple and accessible to all parties. Stepping up again, you've got to organize that data. You've got to create a trusted analytics foundation. The next step up, you've got to analyze that data. Scale insights is machine learning, machine learning everywhere. Next, you've got to infuse, that's all you're talking about, automate and scale across your processes. You've got to infuse this machine learning everywhere. And we've added one more, one more step, which is not shown in this chart, and that is trust. Do you trust your machine learning or your AI models or the outcomes that have that are derived from these models. If you're given a decision, do you trust it? Do you trust it enough to basically drive your business? And that's, let me give you a simple example. If the machine learning was trained on data which was biased, say for example, the data set was based entirely on a set of uh, experiences of male population. Can that same machine learning algorithm be used when a female comes up and says and, and, and applies, you know, applies that the same uh, algorithm? The results probably may not apply as well to the female person as compared to the male person. Was there bias built in? Do you have clarity in terms of how that model came up with the decision? Do you have a scorecard which shows whether or not in, the, um, you know, the decision can be trusted? So this is very, very important. Now, that's on the left side. On the right side is the other reality that, which we need to take into account. And this reality is that not everything will move to the cloud or to one cloud. For many more years to come, organizations will have systems and data which sits in a combination of on-prem systems as well as systems sitting on private and public clouds. You need a system, a platform, which allows you to move seamlessly between different platforms in order to increase the speed of deployment and to reduce rework. But I just want to highlight what IBM Cloud Private for private, the IBM Cloud Private for Data does, a few key highlights, right? First, very importantly, it offers an open and extensible API platform. Now I talk about consumption of machine learning models. It needs to be done easily. Now we can do that by support, by our support for an open ecosystem, right? Which is achieved through the use of open standards. Also, from capabilities which we have developed in the course of our active engagement in open source projects, standards, and partnerships. Now, the key point is this, right? You want a platform which allows you to simplify the way in which you develop and deploy models. Simplify. You do not want to be locked in. So having a platform which allows you to do that is very, very essential. Point two. As I said earlier, the whole 
process and cycle of the data science involves multiple parties. ICP for Data provides an integrated development environment, an IDE, which supports the needs of different users. And all these users have got key roles in this data science journey, and they've got different requirements, different needs. Thirdly, we want to we have simplified data collection through an extensive list of remote data sources that can be accessed easily using the built-in functions and capabilities which we have built into you know, ICP for data. And also by leveraging data visualization uh, capabilities where users are given a consistent data extraction layer to access data. What we also provide through ICP for data is also a fast ingestion and streaming capabilities. Now, fourth point is we will need to ensure that we provide open source libraries and frameworks like TensorFlow, Spark, etc. So all these things are built into ICP for data. And this is really how we believe we can accelerate and help clients accelerate the journey to AI. So if you had to summarize what ICP for data is, it's a, tightly, a set of tightly integrated collection of data and analytics microservices, which is built on a cloud native architecture, Kubernetes. What it does is it allows organizations to quickly get ready for AI by enabling the collection organization and the analysis of that data. And it provides the integrated platform for the different users. So it tightly integrates this whole AI journey, this whole AI cycle, which is critical if, you know, if enterprises want to get on this journey very, very quickly. Let's move on to the next slide. And the next slide is really, can we move on to the next slide? Yes, thank you. So the next slide is really about use cases. Now, if you think about use cases for AI, use cases for ICP for data, a couple of things which are critical, right? Firstly, we want to help our users and our enterprises manage all the data types, every type. So this can be done, this will ease you know, the whole process of data collection and data prep. Next, we will, through ICP for data, accelerate the journey to AI. Finally, we are going to empower team productivity by giving the different users what they need, when they need it. Fourth, we will modernize the data workload. And fifthly, because of the inbuilt policies and controls, we can automate policy compliance and governance of this whole AI cycle. Now, so I've covered technology, and, and let's, let's move to the next, this part, next part of this webinar. Um, so now that you know how machine learning takes place in the real world, now to be successful, you still need to focus on the software side of successful machine learning implementation. And what do I mean by that? There are really about four areas. Firstly, how do you find, retain, and build the right talent and teams? Secondly, you need to formulate an enterprise strategy for data and data science. That's important. That's truly very important. Third, we spent some time talking about it already. How do we make sure that we are operate, operationalizing data science? And fourthly, how do we overcome culture shock, which is real? Now let's move on to the first one. Next slide, please. Now, talent and teams. Now, as I said earlier on, um, a data science cycle involves multiple people. It's important that we find, retain, and build the right talent and, and, and in a team. There are really four primary skill sets required in a data science project. Now, each of these, and represented by this diagram here, each of these uh, person, personas have a specific role, and each role has a specific requirement and need. Now, in ICP for data, as you saw, 
that we seek to address each of these needs, the needs of a, a system engineer, the data engineer, uh, data steward, as well as the data scientist. Now you can see here, you know, in this chart here, this brief description of what they do and what ICP for data can help them do, right? This is a small snippet of what ICP can, for data can help them do. Now, we need to go out and get these teams in. And I think if you go out and advertise for data scientists, you probably get, you know, just a, a mixed bag of, res of respondents, applicants. If you want to maximize the number of qualified applicants, what you should be doing is try posting roles with these four titles and skill sets instead of just seeking out the generic data scientists. These are unique skill sets, and these are skill sets which are required. Now, we need to make sure that we're retaining talent, and this clearly requires attention on several fronts. Now, first, the team obviously needs to be connected. Connected, and this is this ICP for Data provides that collaboration platform so that they be connected. But more important, they need to be connected to the value they are driving. Do they have common projects, common goals, right? And how are their projects impacting the line of business and the enterprise? They need to see the connection between what they're doing and the projects and the, they're working on and the business. Secondly, they need to feel empowered and to know that you know, we have their interests at heart, that we're supporting their activities. Again, I think we've covered that. I see for data, IBM Cloud Private for Data is tailored to address just that. Finally, you know, when you're planning your team, think about building in 20 to 25% of time to work on innovation, on blue sky projects. We need to give these teams opportunities to learn new tools and skills. Now, carving out this time may seem pricey in terms of productivity, but it does provide an avenue for the teams to build the skills that accelerate the future use cases which come up, right? So talent and team, critical. Next, let's move on to the next slide, which is the strategy. We need to ensure that we formulate an enterprise strategy for data science, right? for data and data science. Now, from the outside, from the outset, you need to identify and value and prioritize the decisions and outcomes that can be made with machine learning. We need to map out the decisions that have to be made and align them to tangible value for the business. The, decisions, the machine learning decisions relate to cost avoidance, cost savings, generation of new revenue. This is a very important step to take. It is the first step in shifting data science from research to becoming an integral part of your business because now you're starting to relate the projects to business imperatives. This process obviously requires deep conversation with business owners about the decisions they're making. We need to know what data are they using in making their decisions today. Is that data, can you trust it? What's its integrity? Is there enough and adequate data governance around that data, which is now going to be applied and used in machine learning? And also, how will the businesses start to use the models which will be developed? Will they even use the models which are being developed? Secondly, we need to value each of these decisions or these outcomes. Using AI to make decisions more quickly and with greater efficacy is great, wonderful, everybody wants that. But is this really contributing to the most value to your business? You need to apply a scoring metric for each of these outcomes. And this obviously the scoring metric needs to be tied to the business. Thirdly, we need to prioritize the decision portfolio, which you're going to work on. Now, you create a decision portfolio, and this can serve as the basis for your data science project, work, project backlog. And then we need to prioritize the backlog by access, assessing the likelihood of success of each of these outcomes, the ease of implementation, 
and the value of the outcome and decision. So that's the strategy. We need to have a very clear strategy in order to succeed in our machine learning and AI journey. Next slide. Now, we need to think about delivering results quickly. What we suggest is, you know, you take your top decisions and break them into manageable chunks that can be delivered in small sprints. Start, this starts by identifying the minimal viable products, the MVPs, and then working back from there. Best practice, consider three week sprints and MVPs that can start delivering value, however small, after two sprints. We need to show and return value in small pieces, in small chunks. Let's move on to the next slide. And the next slide is again back to what the earlier discussion about operationalizing machine learning and AI. Moving AI and machine learning from a research project to an integral part of your company requires that it is operationalized. It, it, it needs to be pro, it, it made into a program. So in addition to building a team and setting the strategy, we need to start figuring out very quickly how to integrate the machine learning models into your business processes, your applications, and your dashboards. And also, you need to plan for the continual monitoring and retraining of these deployed models. Now, unless you've had experience already executing a large number of you know, data science projects, I think the challenges you encounter in operationalizing AI and machine learning can come to you as a surprise. So having the right tools and platforms will support this very, very important step of this journey. So I've taken you through the ISP, IBM Cloud Private for data offering. We believe that this is the best platform for helping you operationalize AI. Now let's go on to the last slide here, or one of my last slides, which is culture, culture shock. Now we need to make sure that we overcome culture shock if we want to make sure that AI and machine learning is quickly adopted and embedded in the business. Now there are various reasons that data science gets viewed as a scam in many enterprises. Back to my, my original title of this presentation. And one reason in particular looms large, cultural resistance. Now to break through, the resistance from management. Think about developing early adopters and leaders who will start through the use and deployment of machine learning and AI, they will start to over outperform their peers. And this will create some competition and will cause the resistors to very quickly shift their positions. So one, think of how we can break through the resistance in management. That's one. Two, Individual contributors need to be think, thought about. Individual contributors might resist the shift for different reasons. They might be worried they'll be replaced by the machine or that people who built these models don't fully understand the process or environment they work in. All very valid concerns. In most cases, you, know, you won't actually be automating anyone out of a job, but rather you'll be making the job safer and more efficient. We need to speak to them from that point of view. How do we help them make their jobs safer and more efficient? They need to see this directly. Finally, one, one approach which has worked well is that you can overcome culture shock by raw mass. What do I mean? We identify a use case and build a related hackathon that's sponsored by senior executives. So we let teams work hands-on with this use case and allow individuals across the company to participate, independent of their training and background, participate in machine learning and AI hackathons. So to turn this alchemy of data science into gold, enterprise must really align their data science efforts to business outcomes with real and tangible value. We need to stop focusing on experimentation we need to make data science an integral part of our business models and corporate priorities. And we follow these methodologies. 
I think the music for AI machine will keep on playing. The funding will keep on flowing. And data science will not be a scam in your enterprise. It will be a differentiating and a way to really exceed and leapfrog your competition. Next slide, please. Now, I just want to talk to you about you know, some of the offerings. We covered ICP for data. And of course, you know, we're very proud of what we've done. But don't just listen to what IBM says. You know, there are many third-party independent analysts also reporting about you know, what we have done in IBM in the space of machine learning and AI. So Forrester, for, for example, you know, has rated IBM uh, at the top of their you know, wave uh, for predictive analytics, analytics and machine learning, also for machine learning data catalogs, and also the third one is for conversational computing platforms. IDC has rated IBM number one in machine in market AI market share, which is wonderful, right? I think we're very proud of that. And also the design awards, you know, recognize that, you know, the, the effort and the focus we've put into making our tools easily used and deployable. 